Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. Today is a named reaction episode, and we'll be taking a look at the Tyshenko reaction, as well as a few noteworthy variants and related reactions. Let's get started. The standard Tyshenko reaction consists of the conversion of an aldehyde to an ester in the presence of a catalyst, for example, an aluminum alkoxide. As two equivalents of the aldehyde are consumed in this transformation, in principle this can be done in either a homo or a crossed fashion. Mechanistically, this transformation is occurring by initial activation of the aldehyde to generate an oxocarbenium ion, after which a second aldehyde can act as a nucleophile. This step generates a tetrahedral intermediate, which can collapse via a hydride shift, which quenches the charge on the oxonium and generates the product. Here I want to turn our attention to an important variant of the Tyshenko reaction, which is the Evans-Tyshenko reaction. In this variant, we start from a beta-hydroxy ketone or aldehyde, and upon treatment with samarium diiodide, it's possible to reach the product shown where the alcohol has been isolated and the carbonyl attached to the green ball has been reduced. This is understood to proceed by in situ formation of a hemiacetal, which can undergo an intramolecular hydride transfer through the type of transition state shown. Here, of course, it's worth pointing out the stereochemical outcome, where we can see that we've generated an anti-1,3-diol motif in the product. We'll see later that there are other methods to reach this stereochemical outcome, as well as the syn-1,3-diol motif from the same type of starting material. One last variant I want to introduce arises from the combination of the aldol reaction with the evans tyshenko reaction. For short, it's often called the aldol tyshenko reaction. As the name suggests, it occurs by initial aldol reaction of the aldehyde starting material. This forms a beta-hydroxycarbonyl intermediate that can undergo a subsequent evans tyshenko reaction with a third equivalent of aldehyde to generate the product shown. With that, I want to transition into looking at some important developments in this family of reactions. The first example comes from the Shibisaki group who back in 2004 reported an asymmetric aldol tyshenko reaction between ketones and aldehydes. The process they developed proceeded by an initial asymmetric aldol tyshenko to define three contiguous stereocenters in the intermediate shown, which could then be treated with sodium methoxide to cleave the ester and provide the diol product in highly enantiomeric form. Now let's look at the asymmetric aldol tyshenko reaction in more detail. It turns out that the initial aldol reaction is proceeding reversibly and non-selectively, giving all possible stereoisomers of the beta-hydroxy ketone intermediate. In the next step, a hemiacetal is formed by reaction with another equivalent of the aldehyde, giving an anti-aldolate-derived hemiacetal and a syn-aldolate-derived hemiacetal. Observing that the anti-aldolate underwent the evans tyshenko step much more quickly than the syn-aldolate did, the authors identified the destabilizing nature of the axial methyl group in the syn-aldolate-derived hemiacetal transition state as the root cause for this rate difference. In effect, the authors propose that their evans tyshenko reaction may be acting as a kinetic funnel to allow selection between the intermediates and equilibrium. More recently, a noteworthy asymmetric aldol tyshenko reaction was reported by the McLaughlin group, who used the Elman auxiliary to guide the formation of three new stereocenters. In this example, benzaldehyde was used as the electrophile for the aldol reaction, as well as the aldehyde for the subsequent evans tyshenko step. Importantly, the authors were also able to show that the element auxiliary and the ester furnished in the aldol tyshenko reaction could be selectively removed using acid or base, respectively. Now I want to pivot and check out a few synthetic applications for this family of reactions. First, let's have a look at the synthesis of luminous D by the Cruz and Wood groups. In this key step, the authors used an alpha bromoketone starting material in combination with the enal in red, as well as formaldehyde, to arrive at the diol product through the conditions shown. This overall process is proposed to proceed by initial samarium enolate formation using samarium diiodide, followed by an aldol or reformatsky type step using the enal in red as the electrophile. This forms a beta hydroxy ketone, which could then be fed directly into an evans tyshenko step using formaldehyde. We can see again how in the bicyclic transition state, the hydride is being delivered from the formaldehyde unit of the hemiacetal to the ketone of the beta hydroxy ketone, marked with a blue circle. That step defines the relative stereochemistry of the 1,3-diol motif. The authors then proceeded to carry out a methanolysis in order to reach the free diol, which was further elaborated to complete the synthesis of luminous D. Our next example comes from the E group, who showed that the beta hydroxy ketone starting material shown could be used in combination with an aldehyde to carry out an evans tyshenko reaction in the presence of samarium diiodide. As we've seen before, this process is occurring by a bicyclic transition state, where the hydride of the hemiacetal moiety is delivered to the ketone marked with a blue circle. Looking at evans tyshenko reactions, this key transition state motif is something we see again and again, and is very useful for explaining the stereochemical outcome of the reaction. In the present case, the fragment installed through this transformation was crucial to the structural elaboration that allowed the construction of the macrocycle present in the final target, hoiamid A. 
Next, let's have a look at the Fula group's approach to enigmazole A. Here we see a beta-hydroxyketone starting material being used with a cheap and abundant aldehyde in an evans tashenko reaction, which resulted in the simultaneous protection of the alcohol marked with the pink circle, as well as the reduction of the ketone marked with the blue circle. We can envision this happening through a familiar bicyclic transition state motif to arrive at the desired product, which could be used to reach enigmazole A. Here I want to take a short detour to look at the other 1,3-diol motif in the target. In the current synthesis by the Fula group, that dial was established through a reduction with L-selectride, which gave a 3 to 1 diastereomeric ratio. However, as the evans tashenko is not the only reaction in our toolbox for setting up a 1,3-diol motif, I want to turn our attention to the Smith group's approach to enigmazole A and see how they made that same subunit. In the Smith group's route, they deprotonated the dithione and used that to open a terminal epoxide, providing a masked beta-hydroxyketone motif. The beta-hydroxyketone could then be revealed using the conditions shown, after which it could be used in a Narasaka Prasad reduction to give a syn 1,3-diol motif in the product. Importantly, that stereochemical outcome is complementary to that observed in the evans tashenko reaction, which provides anti 1,3-diol monoesters. That Narasaka Prasad reduction, as a side note, is proceeding through a chelated transition state where the boron is bound to both oxygens of the beta-hydroxyketone. Zooming out and looking at the synthetic sequence used by the Smith group during their enigmazole A synthesis, we can see the general pattern of converting an enantio-enriched epoxide to an enantio-enriched beta-hydroxyketone using dithione chemistry, and then using the reactions we're discussing to elaborate that into an enantio-enriched 1,3-diol. Continuing this detour just a bit further, another important approach to 1,3-diol construction that we've mentioned before is the evans succina reduction, which we saw in the context of the Winder group's Browstatin-1 synthesis in episode 2. We can see in this scheme that that reaction gives an anti-1,3-diol motif like the evans tashenko reaction, but unlike the narasaka prasad reduction. Here's another dithion-based example from the Xi group. In this work, the authors opened a terminal epoxide with a deprotonated dithion, a familiar tactic. Then a dithion deprotection revealed a beta-hydroxyketone, which could be used in an evans tashenko reaction with propanol. That sequence provided the building block shown, which was carried on to complete the synthesis of cyanolide A. As the final target was put together through a dimerization strategy, the authors were actually able to use their building block to provide four of the stereocenters present in the target molecule. Lastly, I want to look at a very unique use of the evans tashenko reaction in selective functional group manipulations. In their synthesis of 13 deoxy tadanolid, the Smith group used the starting material shown and carried out a perique during oxidation on the terminal alcohol to form an aldehyde which was used immediately in an evans tashenko reaction, passing through our now familiar bicyclic transition state to give the ester shown in the product. While there are a number of other ways of converting alcohols or aldehydes to esters, this was a creative and necessary implementation of the evans tashenko reaction due to the presence of other oxidizable functional groups. In the Orglet paper referenced at the bottom, the group developed this evans tashenko based strategy for converting aldehydes to esters, which works even in the presence of dithionines. In the current synthetic route, the authors were able to close up their macrocycle and complete the synthesis of 13 deoxy tadanolid using this unique functional group conversion strategy. And we'll end it there. Thank you very much for watching! If you enjoyed the video, you can support this initiative by telling your peers about this resource or by giving us a shout out on social media. Check our webpage, synthesis-workshop.com, and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time!